So today is the final day of looking at some of our draft prospects. Again, taking these videos from my other channel, moving them over here. Um, so we're looking at Josiah DeGuara today. It's just sort of my initial thoughts on him. I've, I've given some additional thoughts since then on the Packernet podcast. So if you're a Packer fan, please come check that out. Um, starting tomorrow, just so you know, we got our first round mock dropping. We got the Minnesota Vikings. We've got the Houston Texans, Seattle Seahawks, and LA Rams. Uh, drafts coming up so we've got pretty much the full week already done for so make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the little bell notification if you want to check any of that out otherwise here's my first look at Mr. Josiah DeGuara So unfortunately, this is the only Josiah DeGuara uh, tape I can find. Thank you to Mr. Mark Jarvis for cutting this one, but this is uh, versus UCLA. Um, my thoughts on DeGuara, he was my second tier, but I think he was the bottom guy on my second tier, um, which also to be further clarify, I think my first tier this year would probably be second tier <laughs> in a lot of other years, but um Still, second tier is not the I don't want them category or the I don't believe in them category. It's the possible category in terms of I could see them being decent enough. Um, and so I guess we'll just kind of go through this. Uh, I didn't really remember much about him. For some reason, I thought he was kind of a bigger, slower guy. That doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. His 40 time is, is I guess, pretty average. Um, again, we've only got this one to go through, so there's not a lot to go on, especially since he doesn't get a lot of targets but we'll do the best we can to just kind of take a look at him. So first of all, this is him up top. Um, he gets used, moved around a lot, which I think is the A number one priority for the Green Bay Packers. You got to be able to do a lot of stuff. You got to block. You got to be able to go outside, H back. Wh wherever it is we put you is where we want you. Uh, Gutekunst has already said as much that he can play anywhere. He's proven that he can play anywhere. Um, I think that's even true of Jay Sternberger, who was seen as a terrible blocker. I think there's still a lot of upside in terms of that ability that I thought we saw. I thought he did better than most people thought. But anyways, just wanted to show that that's where he lines up. We'll see if we'll play this out or not. Yeah, let's actually watch this one. This is awesome. So remember, he's lined up against the DB here. I don't know who this is, but um, it's against UCLA. And the assumption is if he's going to run a route, he's going to get annihilated, right? Now the ball doesn't go to him, but watch how he's wide open. He's going to cut across. He's open. I mean, he's not I don't know how much further he's going to get, but he beat this guy. He's that that's NFL open. That ball needed to be out and needed to be thrown to him because that's a completion for what? Eight, probably maybe 10 yards by the time he turns that up and before he gets tackled. So first play of the game. Well done. Our second play of the game. Well done. Here he is trying to come out and block. Um, I mean, this is not an easy thing to do, but you're going to see him try to get out and seal this way, you know, facing that direction. So I can't point, so I'm trying to get you to understand that direction is trying, he's trying to face and seal off this way. He does a decent job. See, you know, he, this is the guy he's keying in on. He wants to get out here and block this way, and he set himself up. Now, it never got out that far, but if he gets past these guys, this is where you want to be. So it looked kind of sloppy as he's hopping around, flying around, trying to find the guy or whatever. But he keys in on him, and he gets himself into the position to be able to block. Now, this wasn't ever going anywhere. These guys caught him. There's an absolute um, herd of people coming, a stampede of people coming. But, hey, at least he got his. He's the only one out here blocking, doing his job. So props to uh, DeGuara. Again, there's not a lot here, so I'm going to try to show a little bit of everything. You're going to see him. He's going to disappear, and then you're going to see him for just a second um, because he throws the ball to somebody else down the field. But here he is right here, and he's just going to launch down the field. Again, he doesn't look slow, and then here he is. Now, again, I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken, but if, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's open in the NFL. Now, obviously, at this point, he's slowing down, so I don't know at what point he quit, but I doubt it was then. So I think he had a half a step. I think if you get a quarterback to kind of put that inside, in, you know, especially with tight ends with their longer arms, I mean, that's a catch. He's probably going down instantly, but that's still a big catch. And again, the second time I've seen him run a route where – He's not losing. I mean, he's not just getting blanketed like there's nothing there. So, again, I'm not trying to hype up for nothing. I'm just looking at what it is. I, it appears he was open on that play. Sweet. Here's a little blocking rep here. He's on the end, down end. So, again, now we're seeing something a little bit different. 
nothing. I mean, that wasn't great. He got beat pretty quickly, but he doesn't have a hard assignment because he just needs to keep this guy out of it. And presumably, if this is a big play, he's gone already. This guy can't catch him from behind. If not, what does it matter? He's going down anyway. So whatever. We're going to run this out because I actually saw the next play. This is really nice. And this is this is a very Matt LaFleury kind of a play. So he's going to come out and block and then release. See that? Got him going. Great head of steam. Boom. Touchdown. So, you know, again, when you use the metric of who couldn't do that, I don't really know. But still, it, it the, the, the catch looked – I mean, it, when you got to turn your body, there's some people, and I'm talking about a small fraction, but at least he's not this negative thing. They don't look very smooth with their body. It's, it's the body control thing, right? You turn your body and catch. Some people are very smooth when they do it. Some people have kind of clunky feet and they're falling all over themselves. And then the ability to get up to a full head of steam, not go down on first contact – most people are going to be able to make a touchdown on this play, but there are a couple people who can't, and at least we know Josiah DeGuara is not one of those people that can't. And does that make sense? So I'm not talking about he's in a rare category of people that can't. I'm saying he's not in the rare category of people that can't, and that didn't look ugly for any reason. That was very smooth, very well executed, as most people can do, but at least he's most people. This isn't super great in terms of blocking. He's trying to figure out who to block. This guy doesn't come, so he figures out a little bit too late to go this way this way and it just doesn't work out too well that's just i mean come on man when it's when it's a double slash triple team and you guys all three let him get through that's just beyond embarrassing i hate that there's a much better rep um i mean he he's kind of getting beat and he just takes him to the ground it's one of those things where it's like you know he's trying to stop him from going that way but at least if you're going to go that way i'm going to get you off balance and throw you on your back josiah won that one so that was a much better you know, again, keep this guy off of the running back, and he did, at all costs. This is a nice little block. It's kind of a way, but still, it's it's just a matter of what is your job and how did you do. So he's got to loop around and, and block one of these guys over here. I don't remember which one. But I like how he, he engages with them, and he just, I mean, that's like a, a, a blocking drill, right? You get your hands inside, and you just move your feet, and you just push them. So that, that worked out. The play before wasn't as good, but he seems pretty good in terms of, and that's really hard to do. You see a lot of guys, as they try to block in space, it's very hard, even for tight end. I mean, Jimmy Graham, even Mercedes Lewis, offensive linemen especially, these guys are way too agile, and, and tight ends and offensive linemen are usually a little less agile. So they usually look dumb when they go out and try to t block a guy in space, and these guys just move out of the way, and they stumble over their feet and fall on their heads. Um, so as weird as it sounds, I actually like seeing a tight end able to get out in space and lock into his guy, even if it's a little bit ugly. In the last play it was, you're kind of hopping around, just trying to get in the way, but he still is able to finish. And in this case, actually lock into the guy and drive him back. So I, again, as weird and as much as most people are looking at a roll in their eyes, I do appreciate that. So this is one of those examples of times when they call a play that's just annoying. If you watch, eh, he's right here, I believe. If you watch him, you think, oh, this is going to be a big play. And then he has to stop. And it's like, no, don't stop. So look, I mean, it's, I mean, just go, man, just go and you're open. He's got to stop and, and curl in here. And it's like, now he's covered. He was open until he had to finish that. So it's just, again, you see at the beginning and it's exciting because if this is a different play call, this is a huge play. I'm looking at the wrong guy again, but that was about to be a big play, but it was just the wrong call at the wrong time. I mean, it's fine. I mean, this is who they wanted to go to anyways, but for DeGuara, that's just, it just, it's frustrating. It's like, come on, man, just let him go. He's going to get a big play. Here again, and it's just it's just frustrating. I'm guessing there's somebody back here that's picking him up, but just envision a guy that's doing this and the ability of a different quarterback who appreciates tight ends to get the ball to him. I mean, this is I mean, first of all, if this is the play call, oh my goodness, I don't know who's over here, but I mean that's the guy's open. So, but I think that was the plan all along, anyways, because it looked like he was gearing up to block somebody. I don't know. It, it's it's Cincinnati, man. I don't, I don't expect them to be the greatest play callers in the world, but it's just frustrating when I'm trying to watch Deguara. Deguara's always open, and it's like, yeah, go down there, get open, and then find somebody and block them. It's like, well, that's one thought, I guess. Another example of blocking. Again, it's not much. He gets that initial thing, and then usually these guys can kind of jump around him because he's he's a linebacker or a, a tight end, so it's not that hard to do so. But he at least does enough to get the block so that he can spring free. He's going to get out in front of him, go the right direction, push him out of the way. There you go. So it's something. 
But here he is being used way out wide. So again, he can do that kind of stuff. He's just going to run a short route. But the one thing again that I like that was similar on the touchdown, look how smoothly he catches it, turns his body and runs. Remember, he's a tight end, not a wide receiver. Try to picture Mercedes Lewis or Jimmy Graham and how they look when they catch the ball, how they kind of lumber down the field and how they lay. Body movements are more labored for tight ends. He looks like a wide receiver here. Maybe not a very good wide receiver, but a wide receiver in terms of the ability to catch the ball, turn your body and get up to speed quickly. Here he is up top again. Stop. He's open. Ball's way too late. Turn and run. And almost gets away from that. Pushing the wrong button again. Again, it's it's a minor thing. But again, just just picture in your mind Mercedes Lewis running that. How it how long it takes him to get up to speed. How labored his movements are to catch and turn his body. He looks more like a wide receiver than a tight end doing that. And that's a very big positive, especially in today's NFL, where tight ends are more like big wide receivers. Here's another example of him blocking. He's going to be right here. Again, it's it's sort of a win-lose thing. He's not the bigger, stronger guy. This guy is bigger and stronger, but he still is in the way enough to actually win the rep. So you look at it and it's like, oh, geez, that, that guy's way bigger and strong. Yeah, but he still stayed in his way. And he was probably holding a little bit, but guess what? Still won. <laughs> Another example, this is why you need all 22 for tight ends and wide receivers, but just look how fast he looks coming out of here and how he just flies down the field. The ball's not going to come to him, so it's only going to be a second, but just watch. He's moving. I mean, that's he's at least moving at the same rate as the wide receivers are. I mean, you, you look at his 40 time, you know he's not blazing. He's not a 4-4 tight end or anything crazy freakish like that, but he's got plenty of movement to be able to do that stuff. He's kind of similar to Jay Sternberger in that way. Jay Sternberger doesn't have a very fast 40, but you watch him down the field and you can definitely see there's something there. So I kind of feel like this is a similar tight end to Jace, maybe not quite as good as Jace, but a very similar kind of a guy where the blocking isn't quite as good, but it's good enough. The real exciting thing is watching him down the field, and the question is, what can that develop into? So it's kind of like we have two Jaces, and you just hope one of them hits. That's kind of where I'm at with this. One of these guys can hit, and if two of them hit, that's pretty fantastic. But I won't be greedy. Let's just hope between DeGuara and Sternberger, one of them becomes a really good receiving weapon. So This is actually a very, very nice block of him just winning the whole way out. So he's going to be down on the end right here, I think. Hold on. Yeah, that's who they circled. I thought it would have been him. But yeah, apparently this is him up top watching block this guy out. Just gets locked in. He turns him. Just per I mean, this guy had no chance. He was done from the beginning. Here's back to back the very next play. Again, he's over here, and again he's just gonna he's gonna get this guy, he's gonna turn him. And creates the hole that he's gonna run through for a touchdown. I mean, that touchdown was on Deguara. That was a Deguara blocked touchdown. This one's a little frustrating because you can't really see him do anything. You're going to see him go this way, lose him, and then he's going to catch a pass. But keep in mind, this is third and six, right? You've got a very minor lead. It's uh, third quarter, third and six. So this is kind of critical. They're running the ball a lot on first and second because they're trying to drain clock, which is probably way too early to do that. But that's what they're doing. So third down, you need a clutch play. This is a situation where you hope they go to their tight end because that'll tell you a little bit of something. Here it goes. And there he is. So you can't see exactly what's going on, but he's able to he'd go this way and then somehow cut in and, and be open enough. I'm guessing they're playing zone because he probably got passed off. Either way, he was able to be the clutch target to catch it. I'm guessing there was nothing super spectacular about it, just a good play call, but whatever. He was the go-to on third down, and he made the play to convert the third down. Here it is again. And, and again, this is probably a big part of the reason why Matt LaFleur just his eyes lit up when he watched them because this is his kind of stuff, right? This is going to be another fake block and leak outside, right? And, and this is what Matt LaFleur likes to do, run out this way, and you don't know what they're doing. Are they going to leak? Are they going to block? Is it a run? Is it a pass? You don't really know. Here he goes. He's going to slip past this guy. There he goes. Freight train, first down. He's got plenty of speed to be able to pull that off. Um, and he's still big enough to be able to bowling ball through four guys to pick up an extra yard or two. So that right there is, which, you know, I don't know. I would think you'd look for traits and assume that you can just coach a guy, but he's got familiarity with this style of offense. It looks like a very similar, they like to run the ball. They like to run. I mean, it's just, just the formations and everything that the, um, uh, pop, 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 I can't think the, um, the motion is very similar to what Matt LaFleur likes to do. So I think this is going to be a very plug and play. And really, this could be the opposite of Jace insofar as Jace had very little experience. He had like one year of college 
or, or I don't know what it was. It was very, I think one year with Texas A&M, and then he had his one year, which was cut short at, with the Green Bay Packers. So he's a project. I think with DeGuara, you're getting maybe a little bit less than what you're getting with Jay Sternberger, but it's a plug and play. He knows Matt LaFleur's offense. So I think that's going to be a huge benefit. Another really nice block. I mean, again, it's not, he's not powering anybody, but he does just enough and he's going to create the hole the guy runs through. Here he is right here on the end. Pops him, keeps his back to where the hole is, drives him back. I mean, that's just, that's perfect. That's, that's all you have to do. I'm not asking you to push him all the way out to the sideline. If you can, great. But at the very least, just turn your body inward so that your back is facing the hole and let your guy run through it. And that was exactly what happened. And so, again, this one's kind of interesting, too, where he's, you're going to see him blocking down the field. And it's one of those where it's it's nothing super special, but he does just enough to not only make the play work, but to get the touchdown. So he's going to run out this way. It's going to be a little bit of a screen as he leaks out. Again, Matt LaFleur is going to be all about this. Here he is blocking. This is the one guy that's trying to make a play. And he's trying, again, he's much more agile than your tight end. So he's going to hop this way and hop this way. And he's going to do just enough to keep his base and keep him out of the way. Boop, boop, boop. And there he goes. There's a couple other blocks. But again, that made the difference between a four or five yard gain and a touchdown. His ability to just stay there, keep pushing them, keep them out of the way. It's, it's well done. Well done. Another great example. I, I had basically concluded that he's a better receiver than a blocker. I might be changing my mind on that. Here he is. And this one's kind of interesting. I don't know if this is designed or not, but he looks like he's going to go in and block, hops out of the way, gets up to the next guy and just blows him out of the water. Watch him just drive. Look how big that guy is, too. He's going to drive him straight back. That was that was beautiful. And again, what what is the result if he doesn't get a block on him? It's not very good. Now, again, this is UCLA. This isn't the greatest team in the world, but it's all we have to work with. And he, all I can ask him to do is his job, and that's what he's doing. All right, so that's that. Um, I mean, it, it, we know it's not a super deep tight end class, but I, I believe that this is – what this draft was is – kind of what I said was going to happen, just not in the way that I said it would happen. I, I had mentioned prior to free agency that what Gutekunst will probably do is the same thing he did with Mike Pettin. When we hired Mike Pettin, he was working with Dom Capers guys. That very first offseason, he said, okay, lay it out for me. What do you need to make your system work? And he just went out and got a bunch of guys. He went out and got three new edge rushers that are entirely different prototypes. He went out and got a new safety, a two new safe. I mean, he just... He rebuilt this entire defense, and that's kind of what he's doing with Matt LaFleur. What do you need to make this offense work? And he's going out and getting a bunch of different pieces. He went out and got a tackle. He went out and got a wide receiver. He went out and got a Matt LaFleur quarterback, a Matt LaFleur tight end, and a Matt LaFleur running back. This is Matt LaFleur just going through and getting all his guys. And again, this is, I think, a guy that's going to be plug and play. That's what I believe he's going to be. So, I don't know. We'll we'll see. But, um, you know. I mean, he's, he's a third-round pick, so he's probably not going to pan out, and the Packers are terrible in the third. But I am a little bit excited to see the duo of Sternberger and DeGuara because they both have similar styles, and I think we're going to be seeing a little bit, you know, I kind of thought we'd maybe get away from the two tight ends and two wide receivers or whatever, but it seems like they're going in the direction of the 49ers where they're not building up necessarily the wide receivers. This is going to be a team that likes to run the ball. It's going to be a team that likes to utilize their tight ends. And yeah, we're going to have why. I mean, we still have Devante, right? I mean, the 49ers have one good wide receiver and they do fine with it. The idea is run your system and get guys that can operate within your system and everything will be fine. Uh, but we need we need a tight end to step up. That is a critical piece. We have a good offensive line. We have a good running back. Hopefully now we have two really good running backs. Um, we need the tight ends to hit. And that's where this is kind of becomes critical. As much as we look at wide receiver, we, we have to have a tight end be a good tight end before the system can be much of anything. So, again, hopefully between these two, one of them at least can step up. 